Hello, this is Joe Savage from DevHQ.net, and today we're diving into an HTML and CSS tutorial about separating text. So this is the HTML we finished off with last time, and this is the CSS we finished off with last time, but that's less important. This is going to be a mainly HTML-focused tutorial, because elements are useful. Uh, and if we just go to our uh, browser here, we can see this is the page we finished off with last time as well. Now, if we just go ahead and copy this paragraph of filler text here, which we've talked about in the past, and we go ahead and save and refresh our page here, you'll see that might not have displayed as you expected. So we sort of just have this big wall of text here. And if we go back to our text editor, you can see this kind of isn't what we intended. We put a line break here in the code, and I actually did that to show, well, these are separate paragraphs, and I kind of wanted them to be treated as such. Now, if we go ahead and go to our web page here and right click and click a view page source, we can see that that space is there in the actual code, but uh, when the document is displayed, that white space isn't taken into account. So it has no effect on how this actually displays on the final page. Now, there is a way to show line breaks in HTML, and that's using the BR element. Now, it's an empty element, and just if we haven't talked about those before, pretty much they're just elements that only consist of one tag. Uh, and as such, you show this in some versions of HTML by just writing a forward slash before the end of the tag. So BR forward slash, and then we end the tag, and hence the element there. So the BR element simply is kind of like pressing enter in a word processor, so like if you're using Microsoft Word or whatever. If we go ahead and save that and reload, you'll see, hey, that kind of behaves as expected. Now, the thing is, if you kind of really understand the purpose of HTML and, and these kind of languages, it's to create structure. And so it might seem weird to you, and rightly so, that a line break, something which kind of seems like it's a styling type of thing, not really to do with the content and the structure, actually belongs in HTML. and You'd be kind of right in thinking that. Uh, there's really kind of a hot debate going on, um, which, well, not really going on anymore, but there has been in the past people, you know, outbreaks of people not really understanding why this is here and saying you should never use it. Uh, it's, it's still in the specification for sort of ease of use, and it can be useful at times, uh, but essentially, yeah, a line break sort of you would consider as a more styling kind of thing than a structure kind of thing. So it's a bit weird, but it's kind of useful. So, okay, let's say we don't want to use that. How else can we separate these two paragraphs? Well, since they are paragraphs, we can actually go ahead and use an element that exists. That's the P element, and that is simply to mark paragraphs. So we can go ahead and surround our paragraphs in these P tags, and thus we have these two paragraph elements. And if we just go ahead and just refresh our page here, you'll say, hey, now the default styling on the document means we actually have some margin in between here. So we haven't had to use a line break. All we've had to do is mark these as paragraphs. And now we can actually go ahead and uh, see that effect on the page. Now, of course, we can style those in CSS if we wanted. So we could be like, any paragraph should have a, uh, a text color of gray. And we see that goes ahead and goes into effect. And this can become useful because then when we learn about margins and padding in CSS, we can actually change the spacing and the styling of how the paragraphs work. So the, the, uh, the paragraph element really is useful. And it's how most people will mark up their text in HTML. That's the way I'd advise you to do it in your own personal projects as well. Now, the other thing that could happen here is these paragraphs could be completely unrelated. Now, if we look at the page here, uh, and we just refresh to get away that uh, gray text styling, then you'll see these kind of look related. If you were reading this through on a page, you might go to the next paragraph assuming it was from a related body of content, and then if it's not related, you might be a little bit confused. So another element we have available to us is the HR element, and that's also an empty element like BR, so you just write it like that, and that stands for horizontal rule, and that does exactly what it sounds like. It's just gonna make a big horizontal line across the page. So if we refresh our browser here, we'll see, there we go, it's done it. It has a big horizontal rule across the page. Now, the thing is, again, this is a little bit like BR, like, hmm, the horizontal line across the page, isn't that kind of a styling thing? That's not really contributing to our structure or content. And again, that's kind of correct, because it isn't, and you could use, you know, some special CSS properties, which we'll learn about in the future to accomplish this, but usually HR kind of works uh, on the page. It's slightly less incriminating, because it kind of... But, you know, you can kind of see why it might be there. You can also kind of see why it might not be there. Again, it's one of those topics that's, un that's sort of under debate. But it's completely understandable why it's there. And it's in the specification uh, for HTML5, certainly, uh, which is the most recent version uh, when I'm recording this tutorial. So it kind of makes sense that we have that available to us, and that is useful. And you might think the HR by default looks a little bit ugly. Of course, we can style that using CSS. Uh, however, it's going to use some properties which we don't know yet, so we're not going to go into that right now either. Uh, so let's actually keep that HR there. Let's just pretend these paragraphs are completely unrelated. And so we've used our paragraph elements, 
and we've also used an HR element, and we've kind of avoided using the BR element because the paragraph elements are doing exactly what we need here. Now, on sort of a related note here, we're also just going to talk about headings, which is sort of another way of separating text. So if we want a heading here, we have our paragraphs on the page, we want something to actually just demonstrate what these paragraphs are about, or, you know, since the horizontal rule's in there, perhaps just the top paragraph, and then we can move on to a different note. Uh, and this is simply done through the H1 to H6 tags, which simply stand for header 1, all the way through to header 6, in which header 1 is the most important heading on the page, and header 6 is the least important. So uh, we can say something like this, just like heading. And we can save, and we can refresh, and you'll see, hey, the, again, the default styling has given us some bigger text style, it's made it bold, it's given us some of this sort of margin here, so that kind of looks like what you'd expect. Uh, in fact, maybe we should get rid of that horizontal rule, because it looks a little out of place at the moment. And if we just refresh that, hey, it kind of looks like we have a heading and then some related content, which is super cool, because that's kind of what we want. Uh, and I might as well just show you uh, the H2 and, you know, some other tags, so we can have H2 would be a, a slightly... In fact, let's just go ahead and let's remove that one. And let's title the second paragraph. So let's just say we're into a slightly different subtopic. Uh, just like that. We can refresh. You can see, hey, that kind of works. Uh, you can see sort of a visual hierarchy in the, the difference there. Um, but of course, these stylings that are being applied to it, so like the really big text here and the slightly small text here, aren't part of the elements sort of by default. These are just structural things. That's all being defined in the CSS. And although we haven't written anything about that, the browser is applying some default styles, which makes H1s look like this, and H2s look like this, and making H6s... Oops, apparently I can't type today. Making H6s... No, nobody loves me. Nobody used poor, poor H6. I'm refreshing as he's making that look like that. Uh, and that's just really another way to separate text. So that really is all I have to go over in this short tutorial. So pretty much we've talked about the paragraph element, uh, also the BR and HR elements, which are, you know, kind of weird, and they're empty elements, but, you know, it's fine, it's not too bad. And then we've also gone over these heading elements, which are used to mark up headings. And then, of course, we'll learn far more about customizing these all in the future. It's very, very simple just to add, you know, something like H1 uh, should have a color of you know, this hex color and stuff like that just to customize your different then elements that we've now introduced in the markup. And learning new elements really is useful uh, for stuff like this, just marking things up in different ways. So yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you've learned something and have a nice day.